Hey, Jason, how's it? How's it going with you? Congratulations on Funhouse. Hey, thanks a lot. Nice to nice to meet you. Hey, terrific. So let's start off with the easy question. Where did this original idea for Funhouse came from? Or what, what sparked this? Uh, well, it's actually kind of an interesting story. Like, I don't know. I, I made a movie in 2000. Well, I guess we shot it in 2014. It came out in 2016 called The Evil in Us. And uh, our distributor was able to get it into uh, Sidge's Film Festival in Spain. So we weren't able to go, unfortunately. But uh, a Swedish producer saw it at a midnight screening in Sidge's. He really enjoyed it. And uh, he, he, he contacted me through, through my IMDb and basically said he was enjoyed the movie and re really wanted to make a movie with me. And anybody in film knows that you, every time you hear something like that, you know, you know, it's, it may be, there's a huge possibility. It's a bunch of BS. Um, so, but it ended up uh, being the real deal. So Hen his name's Henrik and he's a Swedish producer. And he had a very uh, rough idea about a movie. He didn't, we didn't have a name at that time, but he wanted to do it based on like this big brother style thing where celebrities come in. So, you know, I, 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 I was interested. So I ended up uh, writing the film and directing it. And, uh, and Henrik was the executive producer. So he was a really great person to work for. And uh, it's kind of funny how it all, it worked out that way, but it was, it was cool. That is terrific. What about uh, torture porn that it's, that it's so lovable and captivating <laughs> for all of us? Um, well, that's the thing. I was, I was really hesitant to get involved, to be honest, because I'm not a huge fan of torture porn. And I, I was hoping Funhouse, I wanted to steer it away from that. Obviously, it's, it's brutal and disturbing. But I also wanted it to have, uh, you know, some kind of social commentary, you know, dealing with you know, social media and the moral decay of our society in a way. It's kind of like putting it back onto the viewer. You know, violence in movies is one thing and, and, and you know, going this far with it, I was hesitant, but at the same time, I wanted to have, I guess, a me some kind of message that wasn't all about just, you know, grim death and, and destruction. So hopefully I pulled that off in a way. You know, for a moment there, I, I thought you uh, you hated celebrities or something because you, <laughs> you, brought, you brought in all these different uh, celebrities into the mix. You know, that's the thing is I don't at all. Um, I think they're, I think a lot of people hate on celebrities. It's easy to, right? They don't know them. It's easy. And it's the same thing. Like every time I you meet a celebrity, it's nothing like you had pictured for the worse or the better. It, it, you know, I, I still get starstruck if I, you know, meet anybody, you know, any big names and whatnot. And, and a lot of times they're not as cool as you might thought, think they would have been. And a lot of times they're way better than you thought they might have been. So it all depends on the person. But I do not hate on celebrities at all. And I think uh, it, it's difficult being a celebrity. I wouldn't want to be famous personally. Uh, I think what comes with it is is just so much uh, misunderstanding. And yeah, sure, it's easy to... You know, if you have supposedly have everything, it's easy to hate on somebody who complains about, you know, their life not being perfect or whatnot. But everybody has problems, celebrities included. Otherwise, we wouldn't see all the issues that celebrities have with suicide and overdose and this, that and the other. So, you know, life is rough all over. I, I uh, definitely, you know, have a, have a soft spot for celebrities, but this opportunity came up and uh, yeah, that was part of the deal. Now, one of the most interesting concepts of your of your film is uh, the pandas, because we think of pandas being soft, cuddly and nice. And you kind of turned that over uh, upside down here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna show you, I had the uh, logo here. Um, well, that is exactly kind of it, the juxtaposition of something totally benign and, uh, you know, cute and cuddly, you know, often has that dark side within it. I wanted to have something that's, you know, you'd never ever think of as, as evil or, or whatnot and, and kind of flip that on its head. So 
our villain's logo for his company is this logo and his avatar is a is a panda that uh, is kind of creepy in a in a weird way but yeah now with with, with the uh, avatar panda did you use a motion capture or did you just go straight up animation um, to uh, to do those sequences we did motion capture for that and i was actually the guy in the motion capture suit so that was quite fun. I'd never done that before. We, you know, went into a studio and we did it all in one long 10 hour day, I think, of just me doing all the motions and, and acting it all out. So yeah, I, I had a great time doing that. So it was, it was definitely a, a real eye opening experience for me, something again that I hadn't done before and, you know, realize how much goes, goes into making those, those motion capture. Um, uh, visual effects. So yeah, absolutely. I would, I would, I would hate to see uh, that uh, panda on my screen, um, you know, just <laughs> popping up uh, suddenly here, here and there. Yeah. One, one of the things I do have to uh, commend you is, uh, which, which I didn't realize was, uh, your cast is an international cast. Mm -hmm. Not, not only that they portrayed in the movie, but you also found them like internationally all, all around the world. Why, why? How, how did you come to the process of, you know, casting everyone all over the place rather than, you know, just, just stick to well, locals? Most of them were local, but I, I, I was very adamant in saying that, you know, if we're going to do it, I don't want to have, you know, a Australian person doing a, or, or an English person doing an Australian accent or, or somebody doing an Irish accent. And I wanted to have authentic, uh, uh, people who have actually lived in those countries. So everybody outside of one character, Daly Nelson, who played Nevin Eversmith, he's Canadian, but he did an English accent. But I think he's pretty spot on because he lived in, in, uh, in, the, in the UK for, for some time. And he's amazing with every accent I've ever heard him do. But it's a funny story. I, I, you know, I try not to read all the comments online about the film and whatnot, but it's hard not to. And uh, there were some people who commented, I think, on IMDb how they couldn't believe how fake sounding the accents were. And I'm just like, those are all people like Chris Gerard is Irish from Dundalk. Gigi Sal Guerrero is Mexican. Um, Matias is Chilean. Carolina is Polish. It's like these people are using their mother, you know, accents and, and people are like trying to their best to like kind of pick it apart you know what I mean I just think that's pretty funny but in the end negativity is way more vocal uh, online than positivity and I think that's part of what Funhouse is all about how how it's kind of the sad state of affairs that we're dealing with that's true trolls will always be trolls so let <laughs> very true very true I've, I've yeah i've had my share definitely dealing with horror movies is tough because you're very it's very polarizing especially a movie like this so you're going to have your lovers and haters of everything you do hopefully there's a balance but uh it's tough yeah well let me uh, wrap it up uh with one more question with you jason you know um you're you're uh, just like any type of horror film it, it leaves open to a to a sequel are are is there any iota of a thought of a sequel? Maybe, uh, maybe bringing in more celebrities or or your troll haters here. <laughs> I actually have. We we had that in mind when when I wrote that ending uh, because originally the original ending was much different. I think a lot of people would have liked it more. The villain gets his just desserts. We actually filmed it as a we filmed it as a uh, alternate ending that never made it. But the, the original script, the Nero, the villain, actually gets burned alive with the $5 million that he gives to the contestant who, who tracks him down and does it, which I think, I honestly think a lot of people would, would have enjoyed better, not to give away any spoilers of what happens. But so in that way, because we left, leave our villain alive at the end, it is open for a uh, sequel. And I have a complete storyline for a sequel that I think is really intriguing as well. So, um, you know, if anybody's out there wanting to, uh, you know, make this sequel with me, let's talk, but yeah, for sure. 
Excellent. Definitely thought about that. Excellent. Well, hey, thank you for uh, talking about uh, Funhouse with us. And uh, we, we look forward to uh, the next time uh, you, you do a sequel to Funhouse. Maybe someone someone else will contact you from IMDb. Well, I appreciate that, man. And uh, really nice to meet you. All the best. Hey, non-problem. Next time. Bye now. Take care. Bye-bye.